English classes are where we use reading to make meaning of texts. Let me say that again. In an English class, our work is to use reading to make meaning with text. That's a really simple articulation of um, what you have done in so many ways over so many years with so many classes. We read books, sure, we write, sure, we talk, yeah, but the purpose of all that reading and talking is, um, is meaning, which is a, um, a valuable, valuable thing that we need, um, we need dexterity and skill and power over. So keep that in the back of your mind this week um, as you struggle with uh, new terms and new interfaces. Um, Keep this in the back of your mind. Last week, we had a chance um, to think about why, reasonable reasons why take an English class, what English classes can do for you on your path, in your career, in the contours of your life. This week, we get to introduce um, what English class, how English classes work. How is it, in fact, that we make meaning, with re that we use reading to make meaning of texts? And you got a glimpse of that last week. We do it with questions. In fact, we do it with um, a very uh, particular set of questions. We got introduced to them last week. Some of you'll notice they changed order a little bit. Seven critical questions. Well, that's what, how, what we're gonna use in this class to make meaning with our text. We're gonna ask these questions. And today I want to spend a little more time with them than I did. Um, I want in the assignment, in your um, discussion board assignment, you're going to get to play exercise or test um, uh, one or two of these questions a little more. And um, when you do it, you're going to have the experience of this recursive ex this experience that comes when we recursively come back over things. Um, what seems easy gets more complicated. What, what was so weird becomes more familiar. Our, our understanding grows, our comfort level grows. Um, but but with, with hard concepts, with real thinking, with mature adult um, challenging thinking, it takes passes for a brain to process. And so one of the um, things I want for you guys, I want so much for you guys is this um, so you have experience in this class where you um, get more comfortable with your confusion, get, get, appreciate how this first moments are, um, are just part of this recursive process through which real understanding develops. It doesn't come right away, nor should it, um, but we, if you're going to do, stay in school, if you're going to keep working on this stuff, we've got to find... Uh, we got to develop um, kindness to ourselves so that um, we're not beating ourselves up all the time. Um, we're learning. We're learners. So, awesome. If any of you have been confused, if any of you are frustrated, if any of you found any of this difficult, hard, um, welcome, welcome. You're doing it right. It is difficult and hard. Um, uh, and and I hope you, um, I mean, I, I'm thrilled that you took take on the challenge. I think it's really great. But I hope that you leave with a sense of some some new powers that's what i hope that's my wish i don't know if that's my top goal but um i, I wish i had read those your work right before i videotaped but i didn't but um more later so we looked at these questions seven critical questions that re, that we that readers ask of their text and when we ask these questions we um we develop more meaning or we find meaning in the text so uh we look talk to these the first one i don't have to show them to you do i um, okay, I'll try to show them for you. Number one, what is it? What is this text that we're looking at? How is it constituted? What makes it up? Where does it begin? Where does it end? Who decided? Um, how did it? How did it? Um, um, how did it come to be? And um, this has is tied. These questions are tied to long. Um, uh, schools of thought, the, the discipline, it's called source criticism. It was um, especially powerful in, uh, in Germany. And um, as, as scholars like Milman and Perry tried to understand um, the great 
sung Homeric epics? How could how could people have done this? How could they how could they have mastered so much content over so many hours um, and do it from memory? It, it, it was a question that, that, that concerned them, and it later concerned the scholars who thought about Homer's epics and the stories that we'll be looking at next week. So, um, so that's a question that a lot of people have been interested in with this, these texts that sit, um, that happen before the technology of writing happens. Uh, who made it and when? Sometimes it's easy. Um, Ong made it in, I think, the 70s or 80s. Boom. Who made the cave painting? Who knows? How could we ever know? Um, um, carbon dating might help us with when, but, um, but it's a challenging question, with, especially with older texts. Uh, who uses the text? Hmm. Well, people use text to read them, but that's not the only. But, but who reads them? Who is the readership? Um, how often are they read? How are they used? Texts are used um, in churches and mosques. Um, they're used as objects to, to assist as objects of veneration and worship. Books are used to entertain us. Books, we use books to train, to learn how to, to train the dog. So, so um, there's all kinds of ways to think about the use of the book itself and the use of the information in the book and and the uses that information is put to. Uh, number four is um, a question that is much more familiar to most of us. If you studied in an English class in America in K through 12, what's it about is, is that that's the question of every third grader. Okay, what's this story about? Who are the characters? What happens? What the, the, this this work of understanding, of comprehending uh, the basic um, uh, the story, and that's a question that we spend a lot of time um, with kids so that they can uh, decipher and decode um, uh, writing to have an experience of story. Um, what's it about? That's the content question. And then number five, how does it work? How does this text work? Um, what techniques, what methods, what forms does it use to communicate so well? Um, poets care about number five. They, they, they vest attention in the mechanics of how language means stuff to us. Little tiny stuff. Uh, fiction writers care about number five because if it's a good story, are there things that it does that I want to steal for the stories that I write? Um, writers want to know how it's work. It's fun for it's fun. I, I I think it's fun to explain things, but it's even more important for people who are creating their own literature to have uh, develop and read for. Um, uh, for tech, the technique, read to identify techniques that will give power and um, and power and effectiveness to their own writing. Uh, readers ask number six, what does the text do? What are the text's effects? Well, you know, what does the text do? Well, a good text entertains me. It might, it may, it may take me away from my life for a while. It may serve as a lovely escape. So that's a thing. A text can, can create a feeling of escape or a pause from our real life. Um, what does text do? Pornography, um, pornography as a text is designed to physically arouse us. So, pornographic texts. Um, are, you know, are, are to link up, link up through the, our senses to our nervous system um, and, and use uh, a, 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 a to create pleasure. Um, so that's a thing, another kind of thing a text can do. Last question that, that so many people start with and shouldn't is, is the text good? 
And that was the that was the worst thing about this assignment last week is that you have just read four texts and put the best one first. I asked you to say which is the best, which is good, and that's a really important question. It's the most important question, but it's so much more interesting when we get to it after spending some time with the others. So um, students have. Many students depend on me or the past or their other teachers to tell them that it's good. And, and great books classes like this one have said, uh, have promoted themselves, read these books because these are the good ones that we want, that everybody should have read. You must have heard that before. Everybody should have read blah, 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 blah. Pick your worst book, pick, 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 pick your favorite dead white male. Everybody should have read Homer. Everybody should have read Milton. Everybody should have read Shakespeare. Everybody should have had the things that we should, because they're good. Um, and yeah, they have been, they are in lots and lots of ways, um, but not for everybody. And, um, and they're so, so complicated and, and controversial and evil in other contexts, asking other questions and better understanding some of the nefarious ways people have used texts to hurt, um, to, to, to hurt, to wrongly take power from those that should have it. Homer's part of that. Homer, Homer is really part of that. So, um, so we'll get there some next week. And um, I want you to, in your discussion board this week, it's a chance to come back and play with these questions. Uh, you get to come back and play, like, which one, uh, you know, which one's most familiar to you? Five. How, uh, uh, what's it about? That's an easy question. It's familiar. If you want a break, pick a text and tell me what it's about. That's a sub responsible application of a question to a text. Fine. Um, all right. What's the weirdest question on that list for you, though? Um, is it good? Is it obvious? We do that in Netflix every night. Um, the weird questions for me are about using texts and what texts do. Those are weird questions. Um, they're weird questions to ask. I don't, they're, they're not familiar to my normal everyday reading practices. And so those are two weird questions that I might use my, my discussion board to play with. Um, I can, I can, the, the purpose of this discussion board is for you to spend more time with the questions. So I care more about the questions than about the caves at this point. But um, pick a cave. Uh, pick a cave, any cave. You can pick the French bulls. You can pick Aesop's fable. You can, you can the brave among you can 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 pick Plato, um, and it can be one you spent time with already, or it can be one that you haven't spent much time with. Um, so pick a cave, up to you, and then think. Hmm, on my seven question list, which ones would be interesting to ask of this text? And then spend some time asking it. Who wrote, who made the Republic isn't interesting. How it works really is. You know, Plato's, Plato's allegory of the cave is so famous and celebrated an example of um, the Socratic method that it may be very beneficial to spend some time experiencing what that is, how it works, and, and wondering about why so many people might think it's so um, important. That's a great question to ask of Plato. Um, I don't know the next one I would ask. I might ask what what it does, what it does to its readers, what it does, what it has done for readers over time, what it what it does to me. It it sure makes me think. I mean, Plato's 
allegory of the cave is one of the first places that I experienced the philosophical discipline of epistemology. There's a mouthful for you. It sure made me think in deeper levels about different things than I have ever had to, had to think before. It's difficult. One of the things it does is it, it, it demands that I develop um, focus and concentration just to get it. So when I'm interested in that skill, or I'm interested in, in, um, in, in developing um, focused, rigorous reading, I might come to six. I might spend some time with a passage or two, only a passage or two of, of uh, Plato's allegory and, and try to figure out what it does, what it's doing, what it does for its readers, um, or how it works to do that. Up to you, up to you, um, you get to pick. You get to pick up lots of things in this class, um, but know that whatever you choose, it's the practice and the doing that builds the skill. So you'll see an example in the, um, in the assignment, in the, the discussion board assignments are always put in the assignments when the discussion board is in the discussion boards. Um, you'll see the beginning of an example and um, by putting it on the discussion board, we get to, um, you know, discussion board gets to be a little, our, it's, we get to have a little playground of, um, of, it's like a, what's the thing, like a sandbox, it's a little sandbox. We get to go and play in and see what others were able to come up with um, and, see, and see where the struggles are productive and, and what we get, what we got already and what we still don't get. Uh, moving ahead with these questions, I'm going to use these questions as ask access points when we come across a text. So we're going to look at Homer next week. We're going to look specifically at uh, parts of the, um, the, of the Iliad. Um, and we're going to talk about the question we're going to focus on after we, we talk a little bit about the issue of, of what it is and how oral texts existed before the technologies of writing. Um, after we talk about that, we're going to talk about who, uh, it's, who uses the Iliad, one person that used the Iliad in, in, in a very special way um, and, and in a very powerful way too. It was certainly powerful for him. So we're going to use, you'll know every week when we're looking at something, I want you to be able to say, oh yeah, we're reading this. That's the text. And uh, Kirk used, asked, challenged me to, to, to look at this question here. Um, and when I did, wow, here's what unfolded. Here's how my, my, here's what I was able to now notice. Here's the levels of meaning that unfolded and became available to me. And now I have a sense of whether I'm going to use this text or I'm going to claim this text as meaningful to me. So I will see you next time in the interim. Please keep yourself safe. Uh, enjoy this strategic encounter with uh, Walter Ong and, um, and enjoy, the, enjoy the satisfying feeling that comes when you do something over again. There, there's such, um, uh, I, I think we, we, for, we, we forget how important it is to come back over and to repeat. And, and we forget how useful a tool that can be for, um, to deepen, to really deepen real understanding. Okay, bye-bye.